Good morning guys, welcome back to Frankie and Diogo, off grid or if you're new, <laughs> kisses from Diogo, welcome. We're also just back, we went for a flying visit back to Wales for the weekend, uh, we lost Yuan's nine back in November so we were having a sort of celebration of her life which was really lovely <laughs> and uh, Diogo and Frankie went to stay with Uncle Nick so we're very happy to be back with them. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous here at the moment. The weather is just incredible. It's the last day of January. Oh, and it's so, so nice. And I'm just out having a cup of tea and really need to get in the garden and it is time to start pruning. So Yuan's gonna get onto that. We need to do all the vines and um, one of the big pear trees really needs some TLC. So we're gonna get onto that today, but I'm just yeah having a cup of tea. I thought I would share with you this is Yuan's mum's tea shop. It's my favourite thing about going back is topping up on good tea and coffee and these teas that she does, this is one of the black teas. It's just my favourite. It makes me so, 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 so happy to drink this. I'll leave a link below to this particular tea. Yeah, I'm going to finish my tea and, and get in the garden. We're going to start with this row of vines here, which is along the path up to the house big pile of olive wood from when we pruned the olive trees that were saving us firewood for next winter so we'll just move that out of the way and put that down with all our other firewood I'll be the trimmer.
I've just been covering here the potatoes with some of the grass that Ewan has trimmed. I'm going to get some more. And then I've got some peas to go in here. I just wanted to take a quick minute to tell you about the sponsor of today's video which is Squarespace, an all-in-one platform for helping you to build a beautiful website. If you have a great business idea, a creative project or a hobby that you'd like to share your wisdom about then Squarespace might be a helpful tool for you. I mentioned earlier Savian, which is Yuan's mum's tea shop 
who I recently convinced to start using Squarespace. I've been building one for my illustration work called Calm Lines and I found it really easy to use so I thought she might do as well. So she's been using that for the last couple of months and the site is now live and it's looking amazing. I asked her how she found using Squarespace and she said her favourite things were how easy and intuitive it was to use. She feels that you don't need to understand websites and how they work to build one with Squarespace. There's nothing clunky or difficult about it. It was super easy to add the products and simple to switch the domain over from the old site. She also commented on how stunning the designs are and I hope you'll agree the website is looking beautiful, which is easy to achieve with the hundreds of award-winning design templates that you can choose from when starting to build your site with them. If you feel inspired to create a site then you can head to squarespace.com forward slash Frankie off grid for a free trial and to save 10% of your first purchase of a domain or website. The magpies are letting you know as well. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and to Sabian for filling our cupboards with delicious tea and coffee. So if you watched our video last week you may have remembered the enormous egg. <laughs> A few people have said there might be another egg inside, we, we shall see. I'm going to crack it, make fried egg, and we'll see what's inside. I've weighed it, so this egg is 53 grams and this is 113 grams of egg. <laughs> Double yolker. That is enormous. I'm just down at the greenhouse planning what to do. It's the 31st of January today, so I'm making a plan for February. And I've just been going through all my seeds. This is everything <laughs> I can sow in February. So I need to sort out where they're all gonna go. February here is kind of when we get our last possible frost. I have looked at the weather and the lowest currently on the forecast is around the 13th of February there's going to be a two degree night so that's the closest it's looking to getting a frost so I should probably wait till after then to sow a lot of these so anything that's a little bit hardier I'll, I'll do the first half of February and then the second half I will so more like the tomatoes and peppers that I can get starting now kind of like spring is just about starting here. I will put all the notes on that section on my website and I keep my notes in here as well of when I'm sewing things so I think it's going to be really interesting this year to uh, see what is how things are going because I'm being very organized with it all.
so I've had the seedlings outside because I was hoping they would get rained on but we haven't had rain in over a week now so I'm going to need to give these some water. I've got sweet peas here that I sowed on the 6th of January so they're showing up. Uh, I also sowed beetroots, lettuce and thyme all on the 6th. And then these peas that I have planted out today, I did sow these in, I think it was the end of November, I didn't actually note it down. And yeah, they're growing quite happily, but I think I will direct sow some more peas, prefer not to be disturbed. But I wanted to just get some going as early as possible. I love peas, so I try to grow as many as I can. And I'm doing a little experiment with potatoes, so I put a load in the ground just as they were without letting the eyes grow on them and then these ones I've put all out here that I'm gonna try and take off some of the eyes before I plant them because apparently you get bigger potatoes that way and then just here I have a single globe artichoke seedling I read it's better to wait till it has about five or six leaves before planting that in the ground so I'll leave that a little bit longer I'll give that some water never resist picking up these flowers, these and pansies, they're only a euro in the agricultural shop so I'll pop these in a little pot to go up by the house. So this is a little trick I learned, so you take the plant out of the pot that it's in and then you fill the pot in the pot you're moving it up to with compost and then let push it all in down the side and then you can pull out the pot that fits in nicely Empty that one back into the compost. Also in the last video we had a few concerns about me planting these raspberries on tyres so I'm going to remove the tyres. So I thought I'd lay out all the seeds <laughs> that I can sow in February. Only slightly overwhelming. <laughs> Got more onion sets that I can now start putting out. I didn't want to put any out in January so they can find somewhere to go in the ground too. Got some saved seeds. Mizuna is one of my favourite Asian greens. Some more sweet peas, some more normal peas. Lots of flowers. Yeah, I need, I need to sort my greenhouse out really. <laughs>
So as you can see, this vine's massive. But because it's now in the chicken coop, and the chickens absolutely love it because there's perches everywhere, I think I'm just gonna like prune it for them rather than prune it for the grapes. And they can just have the grapes. It's definitely getting to what's it called? Like the associative stage of learning with this great pruning stuff. I've never been to wine university or anything to learn any of it. But we're getting there, I think. We always keep having grapes. If anything, I think we keep having too many grapes. So, fingers crossed. If anybody does have any really good articles or any good videos about um, bush or goblet vine pruning, then I would love to see them. Anyway. So I've filled this all now, noted down what I've sown. Today, lots of flowers. I want to do a bit more cottagey garden up by the house, so hopefully they grow nicely. Right, so with this one you might be wondering why there's all these dried grapes on there and that's because all of these grapes had something wrong with them I think it was mildew I'm not entirely sure but I've left them on there because I know now that there was an issue with it and I think the issue was that there was too many growing sites so therefore I need to give it a heavier prune this year So what the old boys and girls say to us around here with this style of vine is to try and have three spurs on each vine and then three growing sites from each of those spurs, which goes against a lot of the other training philosophies. And then on each of the growing sites we leave three buds. So you count one, two, three. And I think the 
because this one's going towards the floor, then I will cut it off. Maybe I'll just cut this bottom one off. And leave that bud because it's facing upwards. And we'll see what happens. This is all experimentation. I guess we'll go one, two, three, but it's not really. So I think that's taken it down by about half. So fingers crossed, it fares better. Years ago, I was working on this uh, wattle raised bed <laughs> using the vines and the quince. So I'm going to make some more of these using the vines that Yuan's been pruning. But this has held out really well. Uh, I've planted it up, and there's some things directly sown into here as well, which are growing quite nicely. So I've just got um, a couple of rows of leeks, some beetroot, some mizuna seeds, some chard and some rocket growing in here now as well as some purple sprouting broccoli seedlings and some little pansies and then these are just some leeks that I pulled up from the other garden because they weren't growing very well there so hopefully they'll grow well here it's really dry so I think I'm gonna have to water this evening here I've just got this potato mound peas I planted earlier and then this is all some broad beans along here and then just the other side of this board I'm doing kind of like a composting path so I'm just layering I've put down some cardboard and I'm just layering sawdust from when we're chopping wood and bits of grass and weeds I'm pulling up there and then as I walk over it that should break down and then I just have an onion bed here that I put the sets in and I've got more of those to plant out and there's a few cabbages in with those chickens are out free ranging
So it's definitely getting a little bit chilly now, so we're gonna go light a fire and get cozy. The chickens normally take themselves off to bed as the sun starts setting and then we just close them in for the night to keep them safe. But um, yeah, I'll leave you there. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you next week. Take care, bye.